It is Tuesday, April 2nd. It is WrestleMania week. I'm Raj Geary along with the Blueprint, Matt Morgan. Matt, how are you doing today? It's excited. It's WrestleMania week. It's a crazy week. There's so much going on. Uh, you know, we, we were talking about what days we should do podcasts, and I feel like more and more keeps coming up. And I, I, we'll talk about this online, but it's like, oh, shoot, should we do one uh, the day after WrestleMania for, for Raw? So we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, a huge, you know, already a big news week, a, a big episode of Raw last night. Uh, the Rock made an appearance. Roman Reigns, they beat the holy hell out of Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes. Uh, those belt shots just look like it hurt, Oof, like they really bad. Oh, so as the person that took those whips, from the people who remember uh, Lance Cade, uh, who's no longer with us, a good buddy of mine, mm -hmm. uh, he, he put the licking to me with that once. And boy, from experience, does that sting. I'm telling you, you've never seen Matt Morgan sell more than <laughs> that. And same with Cody and Seth last night. Folks, Those that wasn't like them trying to sell. It's easy to sell those guys. It stings. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want to take those, but kudos to them. I thought yes. that's what a go-home episode should be. I remember all those years under Vince where the go-home episode, and it'd be like some match with two people not on the pay-per-view. And uh, <laughs> it just you're right, it just made no sense. Or it'd be in a, a crisscross tag match somehow. <laughs> right, yep. I feel like, do you, do you remember Joey Styles on that episode of Raw where uh, JBL <laughs> like lowered his seat? And he looked like yes. six, you know, three feet shorter than uh, the other guys. That's how I feel uh, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> how our camera angles are. I'll sit back. <laughs> there we go. And I'll I'll come up. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. A busy Good news week. Uh, uh, CM Punk had a great interview with Ariel Helwani. Um, it's one of those things with CM Punk. Like, you know, no matter how you feel about him, when you're when you're watching these interviews, you just feel like he's He's telling mostly the truth. Uh, yes. You, you, he, he, he was asked about Vince McMahon. We'll kind of go through everything. Uh, but he kind of gave um, one of the best answers, I thought, regarding Vince McMahon that, that we've seen so far. Sorry, I can't see you. From a talent. <laughs> I, I got to come up. Um, yes. like, and, and I watched Melcher and Brian Alvarez's coverage of it just – to pop myself just to see how honest <laughs> brokers they are going to be about it. And sure mm -hmm. enough, they only told parts of the story that obviously uh, um, they made punk look kind of bad. Their attempt to make him look bad, but they keep forgetting like, hello, we all watched the interview too, dude. And um, I thought it was a great interview. Very good. You could tell punk's got a lot of respect for him because he gave him a lot more than yeah. I thought he was going to give. Right. Like when he was asked about Jack Perry and he's like, well, I can't really talk about, talk it. about it. Talk yeah. about it for like 15 minutes. Good. I'm glad he did. The whole world needs to know. Absolutely. And I was, and I, and I was talking, uh, another friends of our show, uh, the busted uh, open podcast. Right. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Bully Ray was saying how he had a run in with uh, Jungle Jack Perry as well. And I'm sitting there in my head I'm like, what? There was a time in our business, dude, where nobody stepped a bully right i mean nobody and and so i'm sitting there going wow this kid jabron tried to you know punk out and i was punk out but jabron bully right a veteran 3d like hall of famer what do you like come on so my point is where the smoke just fire sometimes sometimes there's not right sometimes people are lying and exaggerating and we know that and telling half truths about stories or people but punk the way he gave that interview i believe every word he said yeah yeah absolutely uh, so he started talking about his he started talking about his return to WWE. Uh, he called it a, a welcome change. Uh, he, he, during the interview, he had revealed that he had actually talked with WWE before, even before yeah. he was on backstage. Uh, he he kind of seemed like he was going to be coming back. He even told the people at backstage that he might be going back to WWE. Ended up not happening, and he ended up going to AEW. Mm -hmm. um, and he said his coming back, he kind of credited Nick Khan. He basically said yes. he, he doesn't know if he would have been back if it, if it weren't for Nick Khan. Yes, that's easy to understand. Nick Khan is smooth. He is mm -hmm. smooth, man. He, he's, he's been such a game changer for that company. He's the mm -hmm. MVP. I know I love Hunter uh, running creative. Hunter's done an amazing job. Okay, night mm -hmm. and day from Vince, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. But 
if you're talking about all around MVP of that company, how mm-hmm. is it not him? How is it not Nick Khan? Right. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, Punk said he WWE doesn't feel the same as it did 10 years ago. And that someone told him that they were glad he was back to experience what he helped start when he was first there. And yes. Punk said it's uh, it's friendlier now and more laid back. I'm sure without Vince there, I mean, it's it's night and day, I think, backstage. And, and Punk came in a little bit, it's WWE, a little bit after me. If I started in mm-hmm. 02 on, the, on SmackDown on 03, I forget when Punk came in, but it was after that because he was still doing dark matches when I was there. Mm-hmm. Um, but... He was a part of the same generation I was, where that locker room was very, very different. You had to really mind your P's and Q's. It was more than you mind your P's and Q's. We had bullies that were looking for any reason to screw with the younger talents, rib them, crap like that. That is not part of the business today. So the Roman Reigns is, the Seth Rollins is, um, all the top stars that have created this locker room. I love hearing it. I'm very, very excited for the guys and gals to be a part of that kind of environment because that's kind of environment that's going to push each other, but in a very non-jerky, uh, uh, jealousy kind of way, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. And we see it with the promos out there, right? They go after each other's throat, but at the same time, they all have one goal and mission that is the whole team moves this company forward. That's the difference right. between the locker room I was in Versus the locker room we see today that Punk, I'm very happy he gets to be a part of and see. Yeah. Yeah. Because some of the stuff Drew is saying about Punk on Raw is nah. uh, way more brutal than anything anyone said in AEW. But you know there's no backstage conflict. <laughs> M- MJF did get Punk a little bit, though, in that first promo. A little bit with That's You true. Can't See Me, Man, and King of Kings. Right. I watched it again today because I'm such an MJF mark. <laughs> yeah, MJF's awesome. Uh, stellar Justin Lopez no, noting that Punk debuted in ECW sometime in August of 2006. Okay, so there you go. That's how long it took him, dude. They're giving him dark matches and talking ish about him still at that time when I was there. Yeah. Um, Muhammad Belsine saying, Happy Tuesday on a Tuesday night, gigantic pop. I hope you guys are doing well. And same with everyone here in the live chat. Our live chat is uh, booming right now. Thank you guys for joining us. And Thanks, I know guys. it's an off night. I don't think we've ever done a Tuesday night before. So, so thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you. A good friend, Peter Bahi, saying, I yeah. love the anticipation for the Punk interview. We didn't get the answers right away at a media scrum. Four months later, and we finally get the answers. Good point. He's right. I was very satisfied. I felt like I should just miss eating popcorn. That's it. It was a great interview. Yeah. And so last just, year... Oh, sorry. I just want to add, add one more thing. So, again, let's, let's replay what Punk said about Jack Perry, about Jack Perry walking over to him and it's like, whoa, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> Dude, you're four foot nothing, a hundred and nothing. Like, what are you yeah. doing? I, I get Tim Punk wasn't the greatest UFC fighter. I get that. But he's still trained to whip your ass. So, like, I, I don't <laughs> know where the bra- where the braveness comes from and the faux big set of you know what on him to, to do that. I just, in a million years, as a first, second, third year wrestler, would never, ever disrespect a veteran like that. Um, especially a veteran that gave me advice on something not to do in a match, and then I go ahead and do it, and then I have the audacity to what are you gonna do about it? Like what? So like Dave and Brian were on uh, the uh, uh, Meltzer rather were like 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 making fun of CM Punk like, huh. and he said that he did a good job of not kicking his ass. Like really? Huh. Yes, really. Yes, yes, that's a real thing. Yes, Brian. <laughs> yes, Dave. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He choked him instead of beating the you know the piss out of him. He basically like restrained him. I get what Punk was trying to so say. So he was being funny about it. Okay, so let's be honest. He didn't really it shoot so good. He put him in a front face lock to control the scenario. Okay, obviously, if he wanted to start kneeing him and punching him and doing that, I'm not saying I think choking somebody is a great idea. Let's be clear. So somebody doesn't take this out of context. But if you watch the interview and how he said it, he was saying it in a joking manner in which he neutralized the situation without being legit physical by throwing punches and kicks and putting them in something and breaking a, a bone or tearing a muscle on, on Jack Perry or something like that. And yeah. I, I'm sorry, I still can't get over the audacity in that kid. I can't. Yeah. 
and we'll get more into his comments about Jack Perry. I'm kind of going in order with what he said with my with my notes here. Right, this is kind of crazy that it was just last year when Punk was going back on Collision or getting ready to go back on Collision. Collision was, was excited, up. and then he went and visited WWE and he went to mm -hmm. Raw. And he was backstage for a bit, talked to The Miz, had a little a brief conversation with Triple H. And finally, Vince McMahon kind of kind of kicked him out. And so mm -hmm. Punk said the invite came uh, from Bailey, who had Bailey. DM'd him after Liv Morgan. He was on a flight with Liv Morgan, Liv, and he lost his earbuds, and Liv Morgan helped him find him. And so he went backstage and, you know, hung out there for a little bit. And mm -hmm. AEW personnel weren't happy. And, they, and he said a lot of them actually used the word betrayed. Uh, regarding that visit okay so at first i was like oh you freaking mark stop being marks come on guys but at the same token the more i think about it they paid him a boatload of money to be their their star mm -hmm. right like it's supposed to be a big deal that punk was never coming back to wrestling and the only company at least to our uh, our eyes at that time and our mm -hmm. ears was the only company he was willing to come back to was aew so that's a major coup for that company. That's their quote unquote Hulk Hogan at that moment. I throw this mm -hmm. out there. Hulk Hogan's hanging out backstage at NWA and we have the internet back in the day. Right. How would that play? How would that play out? Right. So I see both sides of it. I, at first I didn't cause I'm always team punk all the way through on everything, even if he's wrong, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm being honest, but yeah. uh, this one, I kind of see, I wouldn't say like traitor or betrayal, but I'd be like, dude, what the, come on, man. Like, you're our guy. This isn't helping. What are you doing? Yeah. Uh, a quick super chat, JR Smith saying, thanks, guys, Ian, and I hope everyone is well. Thank you, JR. Say hi to Ian. We know Ian's a, 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 obviously watches it with you and chimes in every once in a while. What's going on, Ian? Uh, so Punk then talked about Vince McMahon. Uh, he said he interacted with Vince just once. And this is kind of a funny story. He was it at is a funny story. Gym at WWE funny. headquarters. And uh, he was working out and Vince came in. And I guess uh, Punk was on the treadmill. And mm -hmm. someone told him uh, that, you know, you know, or he was on the phone on the treadmill. And he was actually talking to Nick Khan. And someone went and told him, you know, hey, take off your head. <laughs> take off your earphones. Vince doesn't like that. Vince doesn't like cell phones being used while in the, while you're working out. So <laughs> Meathead Matt over here is one of those as well. Like if you're on the machine that I want to be on and you're the person that's like jamming to your music, but you're in between your set and it's like going on three minutes. I'm like, come on. All right. But anyways, that, that reason why that story is so funny is because he was talking to Nick Khan, right? <laughs> About <laughs> the, the comeback. And um, that's what makes that so funny. I could totally see Ben's like having a problem with that because he's such a flipping control freak. I could totally see that. Um, but I, you'll get into it. So I'll let you continue. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so eventually, uh, he, you know, he saw McMahon. McMahon hug, hugged him. Welcome, welcomed him home. Mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Welcome him home. home and, uh, and said that they connect again soon. And that was the last time he saw him. <laughs> Punk goes in. Uh, that's the last time I ever heard from or saw him again. <laughs> He's so funny. Um, and then he got into the the Vince uh, yeah. component. Uh, Do you have any comments on that? Yeah, yeah. So uh, on the allegations against Vince, uh, Punk flat out said they're indefensible, they're horrific, and he thought Vince was an idiot for leaving, you know, such a paper trail, and uh, and said he felt terrible for the victim. Mm -hmm. And uh, he hasn't read through the lawsuit, you know, but his biggest concern is for the victims. And yep. he equated it with what happened with Chris Benoit. Benoit. He noted mm -hmm. that he saw Benoit's son before he was wearing like the punk uh, ar uh, punk armbands. And he was, you know, supposed to be Benoit's match that night uh, when he, he didn't show yes. up. And he noted that he can never wrap his he head around what Benoit did. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's kind of how See, it is with Vince. You just can't you just can't wrap your hand, head around it. So this is the best by far. I'm not saying this is a punk mark for all you punk haters. I'm gonna say, oh man, you just like everything he says, um, which I do, by the way. Um, <laughs> I'm being honest, right? But for real, for real, mm -hmm. this, in my opinion, was the best answered Vince McMahon question. Finally, like, there's no perfect way to answer it, right? There isn't, but if you watch the tonage, his facial expressions, 
there's no question he's not he's not exaggerating when he says he's disgusted by it, etc. Not that it should be very tough to be disgusted with what Vince McMahon did here, folks. Obviously, every single human being with a brain in their head and heart in their chest, all are equally disgusted. It's not, you know, somebody that's more outraged than the next. We all know how piece of ish that type of behavior was. Like, like evil is all I keep thinking of. Evil, evil, like evil. Something out of an evil horror movie. Um, but he conveyed that and his thoughts, and he made sense of it, I thought, the best I've heard any wrestler or talent or WWE official even try to uh, pontificate with an opinion uh, on what Vince has done here by saying, you know, look, this might be the dude that brought me in, and at one time you're looking at him as a weird father figure in certain circumstances, and then you see something like this, and you're going, "Yeah, how could somebody do this to somebody? And immediately his heart goes out to that victim. I believe every word of that. You see it in his, again, his body language is important. Right. And and just he came across so well answering that. The best of anyone I've heard publicly answer the Vince question. Yeah, and he gave this he gave this line. He said he ruined his life. Me, he meaning Vince, of course. He ruined his life, ruining other people's lives. Part of me is like, good, we got him. Now shuffle it into the basement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. like you said, one of the well, best certainly. responses from a talent I've seen uh, regarding Vince. Yeah, uh, Cody had a good about, one originally, but this one was better. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Punk's was more blunt, I thought. Like, Cody's was more diplomatic, but right, good right. as well. Yes. Uh, Punk talked about WrestleMania, said if he never wrestle, uh, headlines WrestleMania again, it's not a big deal. It's not his uh, his priority anymore. Um, he, he, he confirmed that the original plan, uh, he, he said when he came in that like plans were kind of changing, but at the end, the original plan was for him to take on Seth Rollins. The Royal Rumble ma match was not changed mm -hmm. on the fly when he got injured. Right. And, um, yeah, so uh, kind of what we knew already, it was supposed to be him, him yes. and Seth, likely the main event of night one and it didn't happen. Yeah. I mean, all, all true. And it was good to hear him come out of his mouth and him, you know. Uh, say all that, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Confirm it. All right. So now we get into the Jack Perry stuff. Uh, Punk noted that, you know, like the Wrestling Inc. actually first reported that there was no one to pick up Punk from the airport when he got to London for, for mm -hmm. All In. Um, as we, as many of us remember, the, the whole incident with Jack Perry was a backstage in incident that happened months earlier. Um, it was there was going to be a spot on collision where they were going to use real glass and Jack Perry was going to smash up a rental car. Um, mm -hmm. Punk told him not to do that, and and, and Perry was going to go on a vacation after that to uh, and take a little hiatus. Um, mm -hmm. Punk put a stop to that, and that was kind of the end of it. We didn't really hear anything. Wait, Punk Punk put a stop to his vacation. No, no, no. The the using the real glass on collision. Just wanted to clarify that. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh so the at all in they ended up uh perry ended up using having a spot with the car using real glass and he you know before he did the spot he tapped on the glass and looked at the camera and he goes real glass cry me a river clearly a shot at punk um can you please do so, that first of all can you do it justice do the quote right do it right go real glass cry me a river no Is that right no <laughs> Real glass, cry me a river. <laughs> God, a smug little face, a smug little face. <laughs> so, it's, so these details actually had never gotten out, and, and so far I haven't heard any uh, anybody contest them. Uh, so, Punk said what happened that first time backstage at Collision was that Jack Perry was going was throwing a hissy fit about not being able to use real glass. Like the doctor told him not to do it. And Tony Schiavone uh, ended up going to Punk and saying, you know, uh, look, Perry's not listening. Uh, can you say something? Yeah. yeah. And so Punk, you know, was taking Collision seriously. Like that, yeah. that, that was his show. Yeah. And he went to Jack Perry and told him, look, um, you can don't do me. that on Dynamite, but don't do that on my show. You can do that on Wednesdays, but, but don't do it. And... And that was it. Perry agreed. And, you know, that was the end of that. Uh, Punk said he spoke calmly. Um, mm -hmm. And 
and and that was that. So anyways, the all in incident happens. Uh, Punk said he told Tony Khan to handle it. And Punk says that this is real. Tony goes to Punk. What do you want me to do about it? And uh, <laughs> nothing happened. And that's when <laughs> Punk uh, went and, you know, confronted Perry backstage. But physically, the way he tells it, unless I'm misremembering what he yeah, said. And I, yeah. That he walked up to Punk and said, do something. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, so so what Punk said was, uh, he, he approached Jack and said, "Why do you have to do this dumb internet shit?" <laughs> and then Perry, then Perry goes, uh, basically said, "Well, why don't you do? What are you going to do about it?" Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> Punk's, and this was funny. And, and again, it, it may not look the best on paper. Right. But if you're watching Punk, he's he's joke, you know, he's yes. saying this with a smile. Yes. He said, "I was, I thought I was doing the responsible thing. I didn't punch him. I just choked someone a little bit." <laughs> <laughs> so again, we are all saying in unison, we don't agree with choking somebody, just because I know how people are here in this world, but and cutting things up out of context. But again, he could have mopped the floor with this kid. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I know. Come on, Matt. Punk got his ass kicked in UFC. That's UFC, which trained fighters have been doing this for years that are walking weapons, legit. Okay, he, come on, guys. It's not a stretch of the imagination to think he can't mop the floor with this kid at any given time. Okay, so I, I that's what I just don't understand. The, and let, uh, here, okay, it just hit me now as I said this, Raj. I keep in my head going, how could somebody feel that brazy? That, that big ball to walk up to a, a main event talent like that who tried to give me instruction, you didn't listen to it, still did it your way anyway, and then have the audacity to say, what are you going to do about it? I, it wasn't computing until just now. It just hit me. Because of the environment Tony, because of the environment Tony Khan has created there, where guys on the lower part of that card feel like they're empowered to be able to talk-ish with somebody who's got 20 times the experience that you do, no, you don't. You, I'm sorry, you don't. Even Brock Lesnar, the world heavyweight champion on SmackDown when I was up there, okay, was only like in a second, maybe third year at most on the main roster as a world champion. Even he would never go up to an undertaker and say something like that in a thousand years. Even if Brock could kick everybody's ass in real life on that roster, he would never, ever talk to somebody like that. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was... Uh... I don't know if it's just different times, different generations, but uh, you know we've talked about this before. But yeah, it's respecting the uh, veterans. Okay, in WWE, that's not happening. The lower card guy, or I seem to keep saying lower card, the younger talent that's you know only been in the business a few years is not, or a couple years. I'm sorry, only a couple years on television. I should say. Yes, he has any experience. I'm talking about television experience. There's a world of difference between indie experience versus television experience, yeah. and so. To have that kind of, like I said, to be that brazen and, and, and confident to say something like that. It's not because of his fighting skills. It's because he knew he can get away with it. Why did he, Jack Perry, think he can get away with talking ish like that? Because yeah. of the environment Tony has created there. Yeah. Like the fact that, that Sam Punk, your top star, turns you and go, hey, what are you going to do about this? And you don't do anything? Or better yet, say, what we want me to do. And Punk right. goes, I don't know, be the boss. Right. And he's right. That's what he should yeah. have said. I, I'm, I'm just shocked to, you know, part of me hopes that he's exaggerating that and, not, and that's not true because we, yeah, we get on Tony sometimes. I don't want that to be true. I hope that's not true about him because that company is not going to last if that's the truth. Where you have a leader that's supposed to be leading and stepping in in scenarios like that. That's an obvious scenario to step in on that if you're the leader, you're paying everybody's checks. What you say goes, Tony. Literally anything you say goes. They work for you. Yeah. And so uh, after that, uh, the altercation with Perry, he let Perry go and he turned around to Tony Khan and called him a quit. Uh, I called him a quit. He called Tony Khan. Ugh, what's it? A clown. Eesh, like to have to, clown. Uh, getting tongue tied here. He, he called Tony Khan a clown and said, I quit. And then Samoa Joe came up to him, said, hey, let's go out there. Let's kill it. So he knew that this was going to be the last time he wrestled Samoa Joe. So he mm -hmm. did that match with Samoa Joe, knowing it was probably going to be his last match with Joe and, and knowing mm -hmm. that it was going to be his last match in AEW. And that was the, the last time he spoke to Tony Khan. 
Like he said in the MJF uh, promo, I am a professional. <laughs> he is. He went yeah. out like a pro. He went out on his shield, uh, did a great match with Joe. I love that match. Um, mm-hmm. I love how they made it a little house showy, which made sense because they were at Wembley, which is the perfect audience for that kind of match. Um, mm-hmm. I, I love that match, by the way. I did. Yeah, it was it was a great match. And, you know, coming out, like if you go back and watch it now, if now if you watch it, you can see Punk looking a little myth coming out. But when you're yes. watching it live, you, you probably wouldn't notice it. And then after that, the rest of the match, you could not tell that anything was wrong. So he, no. he did handle the situation like a professional. No, the best part um, is they had he he had Joe do a Hulk Hogan comeback. My favorite part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Peter Bai, uh, with five dollars super chat. Uh, so you know, Tony Khan famously said uh, that uh, when he released uh, when he fired Punk, he said he feared for his life during that altercation backstage that was happening with Perry. Uh, Peter Bahi is asking, "What's your take on Tony Khan's comment about being afraid for his life now that we know what happened backstage?" But that's my reaction because obviously from day one, guys, I said it the night after in this on this show here uh, or, or whatever it was when we talked about it for the first time on this podcast. That's not true at all. How could you say that? Um, I don't believe you. I don't believe you, um, Tony Khan. I don't think you were fearful of your life. I think you had to say that to get out of your deal. Punk maybe is what I'm assuming. But you were not scared for your life, dude. Like, he wasn't drop kicking like headsets and, and you sitting at the table or anything like that. Oh, Matt, you weren't there. I don't need to be there to know, like, those that were there that did see this happen. And I'm sorry, he exaggerated greatly. And, you, and, and I agree with Punk. Like, dude, you're crapping on my character when you say something like that to the whole nation, to the whole country, or the whole world, actually, on your television show. You, the boss, who wasn't a boss when you needed to be it, when, it, when they needed you to be the boss the most. In these stupid scenarios, with that brawl out that happened, you could have gotten in there. I'm not saying get in the middle of the, the fight, Tony. I'm saying the minute that fight happens, the next day, everyone's ass is in that office with you. And you say, guys, you're either game to do business with one another, or you're all gone. I don't care who it is. Whoever doesn't agree to do business, and we don't make money off of this and form an angle, there's the door. UPS is hiring. That's what I would have said. And instead, he decides to be the boss and come out and, and then crap all over Punk's character by saying he was scared for his life. Maybe his attorneys pushed him to doing that. I hope that's what it is because, again, I want to like Tony. He's giving my friends like jobs and paying them a lot of money. And I would have loved to have that second alternative if I was still actively wrestling. So I'm trying to be as, as good as I can about this and being fair and balanced. But at the same time, I get fired up, fired up yeah. over some basic, obvious things. Yeah. And, and to your point, uh, Punk's next comments were basically saying about Tony Khan, he's not a boss, but a nice guy. And, and I have heard that a lot. Um, I've always heard that. Where yeah. people, everyone says that Tony Khan's a nice guy, but. Yes. Maybe, you know, not uh, doesn't have that authoritative thing that's needed when right. situations like this pop up. And, you know, he so, was talking about brawl out like you were saying, and mm-hmm. he said it would have been easier for Tony to, to fire him. Uh, instead, Punk said that Tony's idea was to create two separate shows. And Punk said he knew from the beginning that it wouldn't work. Um, well, well, why is that where his mind went? If you're Tony Khan, why is that where your mind goes? Hey, we're going to create a whole nother show so we can separate these guys? Again, your company, what you say goes. You say jump, they say how high. Everyone on that roster, from punk all the way down. And you create another show just so we can keep these two parties apart from one another? No, get their asses in the room, hash it out, or there's the door. They would have hashed it out. Maybe, maybe Punk still would have been having kind of certain kind of feelings. Maybe he would have walked. So what? At least you would have got the respect of your locker room and your company, Tony, that you did step in. You did try to make money off of this. And okay, Punk maybe didn't want to do it. Then that's not on you, Tony. That's on Punk. You know what I mean? Yeah. You didn't yeah. do that though. Mm-hmm. And when and I say uh, this, uh, bro, I hope everybody knows what we're talking about. I'm talking about the Bucks, Omega, mm-hmm. the fight. To ha- okay, sorry. Yeah, no, absolutely. And to Justin Lopez's point, uh, with Brawl Out, Tony failed to take charge, and I lost hope. If he had mediated their beef, Punk versus the Elite would have been booked for TV at least the next six months. 
This proves his lack of seriousness. I don't think it's lack of seriousness. I think it's a additive of wanting to be liked by everybody. That's what it is. I, th- I think he's just bad at confrontations. Okay, then and, hire somebody. Hire right. your giant EAs. Hire your axe, whoever that person is, to be, to be the bad guy at all times. Yeah. Hire Haku, you know, be the mediator. Ooh. No one's ooh, no one's messing ooh, with ooh, him. Ooh, ooh. You'll be missing an eye <laughs> if you try. <laughs> uh, uh, before we general. we got some uh, uh, some more really interesting stuff, I really want to get your uh, yes. thoughts on this. But real quick, uh, like we said, uh, this is our first time doing a Tuesday night. We're we're kind of doing this podcast anytime news breaks or there's uh, something interesting. We're going to be doing a bunch in the coming days. We're going to do one after WrestleMania night one, WrestleMania night two. Hit that bell, hit that subscribe button. We this is our best live number actually that we've done yet. Um, and so we really want to thank you. Uh, it, uh, it's our best live number for a night that we don't even normally do the podcast. So we really appreciate it. And if, you. if you guys can just take a second, hit like on this uh, episode and hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. it. Yeah. Like you keep saying the bell, hit the notification guys, because again, like he says, you, we don't know when we're going to be on. We go off of what's going on. If something happens like that, we're going to jump on it right away. And yeah. there's not going to be any heads up or warning. So We'll, we'll post it on our page, but like it'll be like minutes before we jump on, you know, if it's something that's <laughs> emergency, like that we're, we're, we've been covering all these things. So please, please like subscribe, obviously share it too, if you could, please. Yeah. Uh, Big Foot, Bigfoot Sneakerhead with the 499 Super Chat. Thank you as always, BFS. Uh, Tony Khan needs to hire a someone like Fit Finley. Okay. They need an authority figure. Okay, can I play my own contrarian to my own argument? I just made that he has to hire an axe man or a bad the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Is it too late because he's created an environment full of talents that have never worked for WWE, so they didn't have that experience of what what you're supposed to be doing and giving respect to veterans when they offer advice. God forbid you asking a veteran for advice. Mm-hmm. Um, he has a Billy Gunn on your roster. Are you ribbing me? I, oh, my God. Billy was my go-to for so many things when I was first coming up. Um, but they have him there right in front of him at all times. He should be picking his brain like crazy. Um, mm-hmm. fit, fit, uh, everybody that's there. But my point is, do would they listen? Do you see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Right. I think now Tony's created such an environment there where they feel so, like, empowered that they don't got to listen to nobody. You heard Hangman Adam Page say, you know, unless I'm taking his p- comments out of context, the way I read it was – you know, he, he doesn't need to ask for advice from people. He's, he's been doing pretty good on his own. Oh, my God. If I was a veteran in that <laughs> locker room, good Lord. Yeah. Oh, God. Like, my stomach dropped when I saw that. I was like, no, dude, I like to. What are you doing? No. Don't be that guy. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we went on to uh, Punk talking about AEW some more uh, and, and giving his views on the business, which – Gosh, I agree. I've, I've been saying for forever, you know, where it's it's you know drawing money and and that's the biggest thing over over good matches. Now I'm not saying you should have bad matches, but right. the biggest thing should be getting people interested, you know, getting is. those characters, those storylines, getting people in the door to care about those matches. Of course it is. Of course it is. Kong learning how to draw money, um, mm-hmm. and you can do both. You can mm-hmm. have those very good five star matches. Um, along with having an entertaining character. I believe MJF is an example of it. I think he's the whole kit and caboodle. He puts it all together, mm-hmm. um, the whole package. But um, he, he, Punk, I, again, I agree with what he's saying there. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he, he said basically, he basically was saying AEW is not here to make money. They're not here to draw, which that I, I disagree with. But he's basically saying that that's not their primary focus when Helwani asked Punk, but what is their primary focus? What do you think it is? And he goes, uh, having good matches. Yep. And then said, and, I don't uh, know. So, 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 uh, go ahead, go ahead. You're going to say something. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Just that, uh, um, again, this is a very revealing interview. And I know mm-hmm. the punk hater is going to be out there like, oh, this our grapes. And we're going to see some hater volley that will come back from AEW eventually, if not, if it hasn't already happened. Um, I'm surprised they haven't got on, you know, Twitter and start trolling uh, about he's a liar. He, none of that happened and all this other stuff. But here's one right. thing I'll tell you about Punk. 
The dude doesn't care enough to lie. He just doesn't. I'm not saying he's perfect, but look at his body language. He's exhausted. He doesn't give an ish. Not in a like revolutionary way. He doesn't give an ish. In a, I'm old. I don't have time for this stuff. This is so corny. I can't believe I even have to say this type of body language when he's saying the stories he was sharing with us in that interview. That's why I believe him. His body language and, again, his tonage. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, he talked more about the uh, the business aspect and the good matches aspect. Um, he, he said, if you're some goof saying you had a five-star match and the building is a quarter full, we're not in the same business. <laughs> I'm sorry. I could not stop laughing in this interview. I could not stop. I had to keep rewinding because I kept stepping on my own, on his pop, um, <laughs> all the time. This that was a great line. Great line. Uh, he, he also did say that he believes AEW will exist as long as Tony keeps putting money into it. Mm -hmm. um, he, he doesn't believe that AEW was the alternative that wrestling needed as a last chance. But he did say several times during the interview that he does wish AEW well. Uh, he talked about the MJF feud and he said mm -hmm. MJF's biggest mistake. Um, and and it, let, let me make it clear. He did praise MJF. He, he does think yes, MJF has all the tools. He just said his biggest mistake <clears throat> is when he caters to the internet audience. And in that interview, you know, he stated WWE's audience is wider than the internet audience. It, it, it is, but like punk of all the guys on the roster to say like, you know, goes toward plays towards the internet. Like he's the furthest one. He's in character all mm -hmm. the time. Punk, with respect, my brother. You're um, again one of your biggest marks. Again, I have to preface that because this is something I normally don't disagree. I don't normally disagree with him on things, but on this one I do because this dude's in character twenty four seven. MJF, Punk, you're not even in character. You know what I mean? You're not going out to these hockey games and you're not in the scene of Punk character. It's a lost art. It's done with because everybody knows it's entertainment, sports entertainment now. Nobody told MJF that yet, and I love the fact that he does it. I love the fact that he's in character and gimmick 24-7. Big fan of him for it because it takes a lot of energy to be able to pull something like that off, a lot of thought and a lot of respect for our business. That's why I always love that dude. Yeah, and and I think with, with MJF, again, he was – saying MJF has everything. That was the only flaw he, he could find with MJF. So it was mostly, uh, mostly good uh, comments. Yeah. Complimentary. Yeah. Uh, he, he talked about yeah. hangman page, um, which we kind of alluded to earlier. He said that um, when hangman page talked about protecting AEW from punk, that whole promo that got everything off on the wrong foot, punk mm -hmm. said that him and page had talked before and had planned out what the promo would be. And he, you know, kind of back and forth what they'd say, not scripted, but just kind of knowing what they would say. And yep. so when Hangman started cutting this promo, Punk couldn't really hear, but he couldn't use what he had been preparing to say because Hangman went off script. Yeah. And he said that Paige totally changed the promo around, did not do what they discussed. Mm -hmm. And he said he asked professionally why this happened. And Page said he believed Punk had one of his friends fired. Now, as we know, that's not true. Colt Cabana was still there. Punk, Colt Cabana was never fired. I uh, was used again right after uh, Punk left. Maybe that's why he wasn't being used or whatnot, but he was never fired. And so Punk, with a lawyer, uh, went to Tony Khan and, uh, you know, asked Tony Khan to take care of this. And, you know, obviously that, uh, that never happened. Shocker. Shocker. Yeah. Um, there's a whole lot to them back there. That's a lot that happened that last everything you just said that Punk said. Um, I went back and watched that promo uh, mm -hmm. last night and again today before we did this podcast, just so I could pick up on anything I maybe had missed the first time I saw it. And if you watch Punk, he has his hands behind his back. That whole promo when you see the minute Adam Page goes off script, watch Punk's hands. He goes behind his back, like holding his hands behind his back. And making mm -hmm. uh, Tony Savani do his job and giving the respect to Tony, who's supposed to be the mic man that nobody in AEW ever gives, ever gives them the credit to do their job. They always take the mic out of his hands and get out of the ring and <laughs> cut their own <laughs> promos. Then don't yeah. have a stick man in the ring at all. Okay. Then don't. There's no need mm -hmm. to have one. Just be like WWE where the wrestler comes out to his music, grabs the mic, and just starts talking. 
There's not somebody that, that's in the ring that's there to interview them. They just jabron them and grab the mic and start talking. It's mm-hmm. disrespectful and, and it looks lame. Um, so props to Punk for that. But more importantly, listen to his firebacks. He's so quick. He is so quick-witted. Go back to that promo and watch it. Uh, mm-hmm. When he's like, where's all this hostility coming from? Like, where's this anger coming from? Like, I feel like you're taking this personally. I don't know why. I don't really know you. Um, mm-hmm. Like, it was a good promo, very good retort on his part. When he's just getting live rounds thrown on him, and everyone's going to say, well, Punk does it to everybody else. Shouldn't it be fair to be doing No, not when you've rehearsed what you're going to say. And again, it wasn't word for word what they rehearsed, but when you when wrestlers go over promos and they're talents that are given the ability not to be fully scripted, but to give bullet points. Here's your promo, guys. Here's what we need to convey. You've got six minutes to do it, including entrances. Okay, no commercials. You've got it. we got to build to this pay-per-view. Go ahead, guys. I uh, trust you guys to do your thing. That's how it works when you trust your talents to cut promos and not give them a script. Okay, so from there, the two talents go in the locker room and they say, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to basically just start off by saying, hey, look, I don't like you. I think you're ugly, blah, 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 blah. And then the other guy goes, well, you know what? I think you're ugly, blah, 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 blah. And now I'm going to okay. say that. And you go back and forth, not word for word, but a certain gist of what each are going to say. And if there is a one-liner in there that's, that's, that's meant to cut and dig deep, you do share it and say, hey, look, I'm going to hit this. I think this will be great if I hit this. It's going to add more gasoline on this. Um, mm-hmm. Are you cool with it? Yep. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, and famously, after shortly after that page promo, Punk beat Page for the title. And then shortly thereafter, he got injured and wasn't back until uh, until September for All Out. Yeah. Yeah. And and um, Bigfoot Sneakerhead regarding this interview, he's saying, I'm surprised Tony Khan didn't take to X and re- rebuttal, rebut uh, Punk's interview. Guess he's changing a little bit. He just needs to leave Eric Bischoff alone. No, give it time. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. I'll believe it when I see it. When a week or two has gone by and Tony doesn't say anything, then I'll buy it and then I'll be proud of him. And we're going to get into these AEW releases uh, in, in a bit. Do you think Punk's interview, the fact that it happened the same day, do you think Punk's remarks about Tony not being a boss or, or questioning that aspect could be related to that in any way? Or is it just pure coincidence? Oh, so in your head, you're thinking like Tony's at home going, I'm not a boss. I'm a, they don't think I'm a boss. Oh my God, they don't think I'm a boss. Uh, uh, I'll show them. I'll show them I'm a boss. Who's this, who's this guy? Cut. Who's this girl? Cut. Who's this guy? Gone. Give it to them. They're fired. They're gone. I need to do something. I got to look like I'm a leader somewhere. No, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't. And, and I will say, and you're going to get into it a little bit later about, I don't know, right now or not, the releases. I do think it's good. Not for the town. I feel terrible for the town. I know what it's like to be cut. It sucks. But at the same token, that company needs to do it. They've been needing to do that. While it's great to have this lollipop lollipop clubhouse honeycomb hideout gang uh, uh, where everybody gets to be a part of it and everybody gets to have fun and everybody gets to have a job. That's not how it works in real life. It's just not. It's the best of the best, generally the ones that are employed and stay on television. Uh, And that's how it works. And, and, And sometimes it's not the right fit for certain talents. And maybe they're going to find their footing somewhere else. Those talents, some of them could still try WWE. And who knows what can happen to some of them a year or two from now. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, Christian Prince bringing up that I think it more it had more to do with the COO that they hired. Uh, AEW okay. brought on Kosha Kirby, former WWE executive. Uh, he was the regional director of live events for WWE from 2011 to 2017. Brought them on, and uh, he's the new COO of AEW. So why definitely do they, could do that. Why do they always bring in like a, a former WWE uh, a live event guy? Because like my guy, uh, um, uh, Raf, Raphael um, mm-hmm. Morphy, was very mm-hmm. good at that job. Um, he was there previously as a live event coordinator for AEW, and then was no longer there. Hopefully this guy's able to do a good job. But again, was he a C, like? But he's COO here. He was not a COO for WWE. No, no, no. This is a much higher position. Yes, that he has it now. is. Yeah. It is. So, so maybe it's the right fit. I hope it's the right fit for that company's sake and for my friend's sake that worked there. 
Yeah, like you said, you you, it, you hate to see people lose their job, but I think very yes. few people are going to argue that AEW's roster is over bloated, and it and it kind of prevents a lot of talent from getting any screen time that probably should be on there more. So, so for the talents that did good cut, if you're watching this, which you're probably not, but if you are watching this, I promise you, this is a blessing in disguise. You're going to get an opportunity somewhere to be who you really want to be. Okay, versus maybe a character that AEW had you playing that you thought was corny, you hated doing it, you didn't think it was really you, or you didn't get much time to begin with. So mm-hmm. to be part of a company and not get any television time is a slow death. It is. It absolutely is. I'd rather be with a different company that does have a television deal where I'm able to get a lot of repetitions on television. Make that highlight tape, send it to New York, send it to the WWE, and let them know how much you've improved next year. You know what I mean? That's what I would be doing. Yeah. So a few more items from the Punk interview. He did talk about Brawl Out. Uh, he did say he did sign an NDA. Uh, he mm-hmm. noted that it wasn't for anything that he did. <laughs> uh, he said he has nothing to hide, but he can't really talk about much because of the NDA. Uh, he regretted the way it was handled, uh, especially the, the scrum, which he felt was cringe. And I'm glad to hear him say he, that. I was glad yeah. to hear him say that part. Mm-hmm. And he, he he just doesn't like he he thinks uh, wrestling scrums in general are cringe, <laughs> he said. Mm-hmm. And he he did say he did the one when he returned to WWE because he was fitting, but he uh, he questioned the merits of wrestling journalists, and um, well, he doesn't trust him. I, I don't blame him. He don't trust him no more, and I don't blame him. Yeah, no, he made he made it clear. They they uh, they're the ones that created that whole entire story up, the whole narrative, a false narrative, that lie that he got. Colt Cabana fired that lit the fire to start that firecracker. You know, one of the things I think that kind of hurt AEW badly with this, this interview was that punk didn't come across as bitter or angry. No, he didn't. And by not doing that, he just came across as honest. And by coming across as honest, it just made, he just, it just came across like AEW was, really minor leagues and, and no one's saying they're on the same level as WWE. WWE has been here forever. You of course. Know, they're they're yes. the NFL of pro wrestling, right? but he made them seem like they're not just even as a company, as a, as a startup. Um, that they're yeah. even further away than we thought. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I think that, yeah. w- that was kind of the most hurt hurting thing for AEW. Um, my opinion, the most hurtful thing was how mm-hmm. his injury went down and how they did not, Hook, they did not, they, no doctor, they not talked to him for six months. Nobody contacted him from AEW after he gets hurt after that whole brawl out. Six months after the fact. Okay. So, like, here he is. He's injured, gets his tricep surgery done. He had to find the surgeon to do it on his own. Then, on his own, he had to find the PT person to do the rehab coming back. What? That's how you treat your million dollar investment, Tony? Like, seriously, what? I mean, unless there's something that I'm not understanding in this story, and maybe the attorneys told Tony, you cannot talk to this guy because of these lawsuits that are potentially happening. Maybe that's why. I, if that's the case, I don't care, Tony. Somebody else talk to him. I don't care if it's a janitor. Have somebody representative of AEW call that guy. How'd the surgery go? You doing okay? Okay. Here's who we think you should use for PT. Um, you know, thank God for Doc Sampson, who was, again, WWE, true and through. That's where he, you know, he, he comes from. So, because he's a professional at what he does, he did follow up and see if everything's okay with Punk. But again, nobody in leadership did. And that should all be operated and done by the company. That's not spoiled that WWE does that for its talents. That's how every major league sports organization works. The company, you actually get into arguments sometimes with the company mm-hmm. on what surgeon they want you to see. Versus the one that I know might be better, you have to go with what they say sometimes. You got to listen to them. And that's the environment I come from. And so I, I was shocked to hear that, that they didn't give. That was, to me, the most shocking part of what he said negatively about AEW, in my opinion, honestly. Yeah, and even more shocking. And uh, you read my mind because I was just about to get to that <laughs> and start talking about it. But uh, he, he said after Brawl Out um, for six months that uh, no one talked to him. And that he paid for his surgeries uh, himself. And, and he found only the had, surgeon. Had, yeah, he found the surgeon. He, he had to take care of everything. Uh, he had no help from AEW during that time. Now, it's one thing if he was released, fired, of course, then, you know, yeah, whatever. You're on your own. They should still pay for it because it happened during the match with Moxley. Yeah, or, it's technically. It's, 
it, it's believed to have happened during the match with Moxley. And if it did, they should have definitely paid. But yes, um, regardless, he's still under contract with them. He wasn't fired, you know, and he's your top star. It's just, it just yes. seems like between that and not picking him up at the airport, it's like, this is your top star. What is going on? Like, that's what I mean. Again, the buck always stops with the leader. Now, everybody bags on Tony. Probably sounds like I am and we do sometimes. But it's like what, something needs to happen here. Whether Tony hires somebody to be that front man and be that mm-hmm. quote-unquote leader, then so be it. But somebody needs to do this and be this entity um, because Tony's not doing it. Mm-hmm. He said with Collision, you know, he – he didn't think it would work in AEW. Didn't think the separate shows would work, but you know, he, he did what he could to try and he kind of made collision his show. And so you did hear these reports of him not wanting certain people backstage and things like that. And I, that's pretty much why punk wanted that to be, you know, basically his responsibility and, and, and build that, build that okay. brand as, as much as he could. Okay. So there's a second thing here. I, I maybe I didn't like, um, Okay, so when you're a top star, what you say usually goes this is how wrestling has always worked for decades. You're the straw that stirs the drink, right? So, therefore, you're supposed to be able to have, like, Hulk Hogan always got to do whatever the hell he wanted. And mm-hmm. all this Stone Cold, everybody gets to, you know, call their shot because they're the draw, right? That's how it works. With that said, though, I didn't think that was in good taste to be able to want his own show where nobody else can come and it does look kind doesn't look good in my opinion it would have looked better if he's like i don't know why we're doing a separate show tony i'm cool with working with anybody even though i might want to tear their faces off in real life i'm a professional and i can work with anybody you put me in front of and i'll put up with these child hijinks as long as i can but tony i'm warning you if you don't step in and do something about it next time this happens you're not gonna like how i handle it and, and something along those lines um i just didn't like that because it creates tribalism by saying, hey, this is my show. Yeah, we only want certain talents here, like FD- FTR and these guys and these gals. And then you guys could do all your high spot stuff over on your dumb show. Like, when you do that, it does create palace intrigue, right? It definitely does that. But, but mm-hmm. because we know AEW and we know how they think, they would never get the two to work against each other and make money out of that scenario. That's yeah. what the whole thing should have been about. Right. Yep. No, I, I do agree with you. That I, I could see that rubbing people the wrong way for sure. Yeah. Now, kind of, kind of closing the door on his uh, conversation. You know, his, his comments about AEW. He said, basically, he with his run with AEW, he doesn't regret it, and he said yeah. that um, the positives outweigh the negatives. He said he made a lot of friends. He got to do, do cool stuff like working with Sting, including mm-hmm. doing stuff with Sting at the Greensboro Coliseum. Um, so, and he, and he wish, talked about his stuff with MJF and said it was head and shoulders above the rest. It was. That was it's still to this day. If you guys go back and watch that, I've seen this highlight video, like this, 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 this YouTube channel, I forget the name of it, that shows the entire storyline of the MJF versus CM Punk feud. It was so good. It really was so good. Better than what you remember, even, I'll argue. Go back and watch it again. All those mm-hmm. promos leading up to it were freaking magical. The matches were awesome. The uh, MJF, will you be my Valentine? Was awesome that promo. Um, the dog car match was great. Uh, MJF calling himself the devil, like, uh, uh you know what I mean? Devil's greatest right. trick. You know, he's so good. The whole storyline was awesome, and I still think it's underrated as hell. Yeah, it was a great storyline, and, and great. one of the I mean, I, I like pretty much all the storylines Punk was involved with, but that was definitely the best. Yes, um, yes. Uh, and real quick, uh, guys, we are uh, well over a thousand live viewers. We're close to eleven hundred. By far, our best live numbers yet. Really appreciate it. Thank you again. And if you haven't already, one more time, just please take a second and smash, smash that like button, or is it smash the subscribe button and hit the like button? Whatever it is, just, just please take a second and do it. We really appreciate it. You can tell I'm almost fifty. Twenty. I was just gonna say, same here. I'm on the same boat. To what I was about to say. Uh, hashtag 2015 wants its uh, b- promo back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Mr. Beast, uh, Mr. Beast from 2016 wants his promo back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
wish I could take that one back. All right. <laughs> he did. Uh, he, oh, yeah. One more thing. He did talk about Colt Cabana. Uh, he did say Colt Cabana, after, you know, did approach him uh, before the all out scrum and tried to talk to Punk. And Punk told him that he would not respond to him without a lawyer present. So um, that's, not gonna, that's not going to get that's not going to get that's not going to get smoothed smoothed over anytime soon. Oh, God, how uncomfortable must that have been? Oh my God, a poor guy probably want to crawl in a hole. Um, I like I, I like him though. I I know him in real life, and I think he's funny as hell. Um, yeah. but uh, I just that's a shame. I'm sorry. I'll always think that's a shame that those two ain't boys no more. That sucks. Yeah, yeah, I know. And uh, yeah, that was kind of it. I mean, he he talked about his uh, coming back. He said he's probably going to be like half the time, which sounds crazy because that would be like four to five months, which would be, you know, in the next couple of months. Uh, He did hint Hint. at some PLEs this summer that haven't been announced yet. And since then, WWE announced Clash at the Castle on Saturday, June 15th at the OVO Hydro in Glasgow. Nothing gets by Raj. Nothing gets by Raj. I thought I was going to be the one who break that on there, but I wasn't. (laughs) Saturday, (laughs) June 15th. So uh, Clash at the Castle is back. So yeah, uh, if he does come back to that, that's uh, that don't, would be I, very soon. It would, don't, brother, don't, don't. You saw how over you still are without being on television every week. Crowd was going bonkers uh, last this, this past uh, Monday Night Raw during the beating of Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins when they were on the, the babyface or on the cell getting whipped by those weightlifting belts. Who were they chanting for? They weren't chanting yeet. They weren't chanting no yeet. They weren't chanting Cody. They weren't chanting uh, uh, Seth. They were chanting CM Punk. Go back and watch it again. They wanted Punk to make the save. So the fact, dude, you're Punk, you don't have to be on television to be over with these folks. So I know you want to come back. I would chill and make sure you come back as solid as you possibly can. And again, I do think Punk has never looked this muscular, like big. I've never ever thought I'd use those words to describe Punk's physique, but he he is. He's as biggest I've ever seen him be. And I just don't know if his body is built to hold that 215 pounds of muscle. I don't know if it's built to carry that at that age. I almost think he, and this sounds so contradictory to just general health, but it almost feels like he'd be better with skinny fat as far as being able to work in the ring at the t- style he likes to work. Um, mm-hmm. Because just taking a flat face bump from that, you know, future shock, that's all that is. That's a, that's a face bump to tear your tricep doing that means your muscles are super tight. I mean, I'm not, I'm no doctor, but I am a bodybuilder and I know the muscles upside down, inside out. And I know like when people are tearing muscles like Batista did on a frigging treadmill, he was coming back from a different muscle tear. He's doing work, cardio. And tore a tricep on the frigging, um, what do you call it? Not exercise bike, but the treadmill, like jogging. So if you're you're doing this, you tear a tricep, folks. There's red flags going off. That holy shit! Why is the tricep so tight? Why is his muscle so uh, um, unsaturated and not having enough water in it? Hmm. Right. Um, do you know? So with Punk, definitely not saying that because they have the t- the toughest tests there are. Obviously, WWE's drug policy. But what I'm saying is, I don't think his body, his frame is used to carrying that kind of size, that kind of mass, and mm-hmm. work the way he works. I think he'd be better to be a little bit lighter. Uh, even though, like, majority of his career is like, why does this guy just hit the weight room? He'd have the whole package. He would just have, like, a good physique on him. Well, now the poor guy comes, does all this hard work, comes back looking like a million bucks, physically better than he's ever looked, muscularly wise. And he gets hurt and he keeps getting hurt. So I do think he's carrying too much. Yeah. Yeah, and you, and you could see the <clears throat> that he 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 is carrying more muscle. So you know, Cody was doing that too when he first came back. Yes, yes. got that injury, and now he's more. He's toned more, a little bit more back. Lean. Yeah, a little bit backward. Yeah, he went down a little bit. Yeah, big big time Baxter asking yes. about the Scotland pay per view. Yes. Drew staying that and now. So this is an interesting thing. He is Drew is prominently featured on the poster. He is the main focus on that poster. Obviously. He's from Scotland. That's the smart move. But yeah. his contract is reportedly up like this week at the end of the Ooh. week. I think so, was, I, I do think he's resigned. They've they've got to have some sort of agreement because uh, oh. because if they lost him now when he is at his hottest, that would be that would be a blow. You know, it would. I know 
them getting Okada and Will Ospreay and these guys over WWE, th- that was a that was a nice coup by Tony. But this would yeah. be a blow. Okay, it would because he wouldn't be on WWE program anymore as one of their hottest acts. Mm-hmm. I still would argue AEW would not know what to do with him. And that is they would point. not know what to do. They would not know what to do with him. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was the Punk interview. A huge week, obviously, coming up. Uh, it was uh, revealed on Raw last night that Roman Reigns will be inducting Paul Heyman into the WWE Hall of Fame. So that's that's pretty cool. It is. Um, and we also got the match order. I could, oh, real quick, let's go to, about the AEW releases that we mentioned earlier. Also, uh, I want to talk Hunt- about... I also oh. want to talk about what happened on um, uh, uh, SmackDown and Raw real quick with Rock. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let me let's do the AEW releases and then go to uh, Raw and finish with WrestleMania. All right, go real quick. Uh, all right. So AEW they released uh, ten names. This was the first time they've ever done like a mass releases. These were all cuts. These weren't people whose contract expired. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anthony Henry, uh, the boys who were with Dalton Castle, Stu Grayson, famously with the Dark Order, mm-hmm. Gravity, Dasha Fuentes, uh, Slim J, Parker Bordeaux, Jose the Assistant, and George All. Don't know so, the last one. A I lot of names s- that weren't really being used that much. And again, like Except I said for earlier, Dasha. But like I said earlier, guys and gals, this... You ever heard a saying when one door closes and another opens? That really is the truth in pro wrestling. I swear to Christ on it. Um, make the most of this opportunity, though. If you weren't being used on television, no offense, you shouldn't want to be there anyway. Like, you don't want to be the one that's just coming and catering every single week and never getting on television, ever. You don't want that. That's a slow death. And it's going to slow, it's going to slow your progress as well, especially younger talents. You need to be in the ring wrestling every single weekend, whether that's in front of 20 people, whether it's in front of, you know, 5,000. Whereas it's 60,000, you have to be in the ring every week in order to continue to improve if you're newer in this business. And also, you got to try different things out for your character. How are you supposed to develop your character if you're not getting repetitions to try them on audiences? With no house shows, essentially, nowadays, it's even harder for you to do that. That's why you really need to find a show, whether it's Impact, uh, um, maybe it, it is some of these other companies, maybe it's in Japan, I don't know. But get something out there you could put on tape tape i'm so old something you can put on on film though right <laughs> and share it all over social media about maybe a new character you're trying out you know this is your time to swing for the fences and do you this is a good thing i promise you guys um you're gonna have other opportunities to make that money but more importantly find who you really are once you find out who you really are or what you're comfortable doing with those in between the moves scenarios when you're in the ring which is when a character is made it's not through their moves it's the in between the move stuff what you're doing in that ring with your body ex- language your facial expressions all that stuff your promos now's your chance to work on all that and find who each and every one of you are and come back and make 10 times more money and make him regret the day he ever released you shove yeah. it where the sun shove it where the sun don't shine is what i'm saying yeah, just just being under contract. Yes, you are getting a paycheck, but not being used. You're not evolving as a performer. You're not going anywhere. So this does give you that opportunity to to work on yourself, to branch yes. out and, and become a character. So absolutely. Uh, when I was let, when I was released from WWE, I was irate. Here I take Vince's word. He gives me the stupid stuttering character. Mm-hmm. You know, I graduated like some of my class with a public speaking degree, communicate. Like, was he know any of this, Johnny? <laughs> and <laughs> why would he make, why would he make a start? That makes no sense. But he's my boss. I'm going to shut up and listen to him again. He says, "Jump." My job is to say how high. And so yeah. when I got released, though, I made sure that wherever I was going, I'm going to make more money. And two, I'm going to make them regret doing that. And I got that. I got that call about a year after my initial release when I already decided that I was going to be staying with New Japan at that time. And then when I went to TNA, they tried to sign me again. Nope, staying with TNA. They're going to give me an opportunity to be the blueprint character. And then finally, yes, I was going to come back to WWE in 2014. I was coming back on my terms, which is awesome. Uh, they were going to, they, they were going to finally let me be the blueprint. But my point is, that was over a seven year span. I had built up equity of this, you know, blueprint character and who I really am, versus playing a stuttering character that's not really who I am. Or Brock Lesnar's heavy. Brock doesn't need a heavy. Hello, it's Brock Lesnar. <laughs> um, things, <laughs> things like that. So, again, guys and gals, again, make them regret the day they released you. Yeah. Uh, talking about Raw last night, um, 
the first hour was commercial free. I would think that the show is going to do a good rating, but it was against that Hawkeyes game. Ooh. Uh, Caitlin Ooh. Clark Ooh. and that game Ooh. did NFL numbers. It did 12.3 million viewers. We don't have the raw rating yet, uh, but that game did 12.3 million viewers. Uh, for, I mean, that's just insane numbers. Uh, LSU kept it close too, which was scary um, because they beat uh, um, Iowa last year and they sent uh, um, her packing. So this was cool to see the redemption and her come back and whip, put it on LSU major, major, major way. But I was going back and forth between that and Raw. And then I eventually yeah. fell asleep. I'm so sorry, Raw. Uh, right. um, <laughs> yeah, but, we weren't going to do this podcast last sorry. time. Sorry. But... My fault. Old man. <laughs> Old man. So, but real quick, um, it was awesome. I watched it this morning. I was so angry. I didn't see it live. Great, great selling uh, on the baby faces part. Seth and, and Cody did a great job here. I like Seth's promo. Um, I thought he did a good job of making punk, uh, punk, making Rock look like a punk a little bit by calling him out, by saying, <laughs> who wants to see Seth Rollins versus The Rock? And, of course, everyone naturally they're like, yeah. And then Rock had to pull the carpet out from underneath all the fans. Like, nope. I mean, me, um, that was good because it got Rock heat, which was good. Yeah. The whole thing was great. Um, the whole thing was great. Yeah, sorry. I'm just checking on one thing. What, what were your thoughts on, on that opening promo? Because it, it was about – the com commercial free first hour, the first uh, uh, like 40 minutes was the Rock Roman Reigns promo. And 10 minutes of that was the Rock just coming to the ring, the crowd going crazy. I thought I thought it was awesome. And it was, it was. legitimately think about Raw has been on the air for 30 years. And this was legitimately the biggest gate they've ever had for a Raw in history, a domestic Raw in history. Uh, I, I was shocked at that. I really was. I know they're red hot right now, but good Lord, yeah. that really says something. Think yeah. about that, guys. Folks at home, think about all those Austin 316 shirts. Think about people just wanting to come see Steve Austin at, like on his ascent, right? Yeah. Like it was crazy town, USA trying to get a ticket for, for Raw back in the day. But to see that they broke the all time record, that's impressive as hell. Yeah. And I just checked, this is correct. Big time Baxter noting that Raw did 1.783 million viewers, according to Sports TV ratings, who replied to a fan. And yeah, Hour One did almost 2 million viewers. I believe that's the, uh, I'll have to double check, but it's one of the biggest hours uh, in, I think, uh, probably years. Um, wow. Hour Two did 1.76 million, and Hour Three did 1.64. You no, know, it's crazy to me that these are good numbers today, by the way. Like, that's crazy <laughs> to me. This is crazy to me. Yeah. Well, I mean, the number one platform is no longer like NBC or CBS. It's right. YouTube and TikTok. Right. You know? No, it's it's wild. Uh, Shradeep Sengupta with the 200 rupee super chat. Thank you, Shradeep. Hi from India. I know it is punk side and it is going to show him right. But do you think... Uh, if there was no truth in it, then TK would not shy away from Twitter like he does every time there is anything. So that's a good question. Somebody asked something similar earlier or said something earlier, like they were surprised Tony's not on Twitter, you know, trying to condemn it or tear it down. I say give it time, uh, Sridip, give it time, my friend, um, because I'll, I'll give it 48 hours to 72 hours before Tony, you know, Khan just can't excessively give me my, give me my phone, give me my phone. And uh, get on Twitter and try to shoot it down and, you know, fire back. But yeah. let's see if he doesn't. I hope he doesn't. I hope he doesn't because it's just going to make it worse. It's going to draw more <laughs> eyeballs that maybe didn't see that interview from the AEW fan point perspective. Maybe it'll draw eyeballs to seeing that interview and they're going to see all the other things he said about AEW. I wouldn't, Tony. I'd let it go. Yeah. Let, 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 let dead dogs lie. Yeah. Um, do you think he just avoids interviews for a while now, or does he do the usual? Oh, I can't talk about that, or I'm not he, talk he about that. go back to our earlier episodes, whatever we said, Raj. He should not be doing the interviews to begin with. He's not the person that's supposed to draw fans to the arena to pay their hard earned money for a ticket to see wrestlers. Okay, mm -hmm. he's the boss of the lead of the, the leader, of, so called leader of these wrestlers, yes, but he should not. You know, you never saw Vince McMahon doing more interviews than his top, top stars going into Mania season. No way. Right. Hulk Hogan was all over that place. Stone Cold, all over the place. The Rock, all over the place. Vince, yeah, doing a couple things here with Bob Costas or, or like weird interviews like that, sure. But not more than what the talents were doing. He has talents that could cut good promos. 
He has talents that know how to play their part and be in an interview and do a good job. He needs to utilize them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scotty Saylor with the 499 Super Chat asking, where is big time Rubenstein tonight? And does G- Golda show up at Mania Night 2 to fight Bloodline? So Rubenstein, it's NXT yeah. night, you think. He's in NXT mode tonight. But it'll be the three of us this weekend. Uh, both nights of WrestleMania right after. Stay tuned. Again, like, subscribe. You'll get the notification right away. We're going to go live right after both nights of WrestleMania and after NXT Stand and Deliver. NXT Stand and Deliver, we'll, we'll discuss that. And we'll also, anything big from the Hall of Fame, smack down the night before and any other news heading into wrestlemania so more uh, definitely check it out more importantly i will never in a thousand years subscribe to this big time rubenstein <laughs> don't try to get that over scotty it will not fly here btr <laughs> i like miss it him. <laughs> uh terry allen jr with the five dollar and eight uh, super chat. I was born with Asperger's embrace, my rebel nature. What is the plan to celebrate being different for Autism Awareness Month for your son? Thanks. Great question. I'm so happy you, you asked that. You give me a chance to promote something my wife and I created here in the city of Longwood. It's uh, Last year we had our first. This year will be our second annual City of Longwood Walk for Autism Awareness and Inclusion on April 27th, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Ryder Park in Longwood, R-E-I-T-E-R Park. Um, we have, uh, it's a completely free event, and it's not, it's an event that as an autism family, I can speak from experience that there's so many services here in this community for my son that, that we know he needs, but there's so many others out there that maybe we're not aware of. It's not just my family, it's every autism family. We keep learning more about the bevy of services that could be out there. So because there's so many families that I'm friends with that are also neurodiverse families, um, that still don't know there's always other services out there. Larissa, my wife, and I created this event in the city of Longwood. It's a completely free event every year. I go out and I fundraise for this event specifically, so no tax dollars get spent on it. Um, our small businesses chip in and want to be a part of it because it's an important event. And the theme is, yes, it's a walk where we walk around the park in unison and to show a solidarity between neurotypical and neurodiverse uh, peeps. All of us co- combined as one. But at the same time, in my opinion, the most important part is exposing these different services we have in our community in the form of vendor booths. So to be a vendor at this event, we're going to have over 50 this year. You have to provide a service in the space of autism. You have to. Otherwise, you're not going to be a part of this event because, again, it's free. We're letting you do it for free and promote your business, not just to promote your business, but because these families need to learn about the other services that are out there that they might not have heard of yet. The other part of this is we all know when kids that are autistic once they hit 18, they're, they, all, they fall off this damn cliff of services available to our neurodiverse kiddos that are now young adults at 18. So because of that, we're going to have also a huge bevy of different service providers that hire specifically autistic kids, those that are on the ASD spectrum, those that are neurodiverse. Um, and I'm really excited about that. Those that will not just hire them but train them and teach them a skill set that they're going to be able to use in the form of a trade or working at a store, something that they're going to be proud of so they can contribute to society. Um, It's a very big deal. And last year was the first, not just in the city of Longwood, it was the first in all of Seminole County. Um, I was shocked at that. And I'm very proud of that now knowing that this will be our second one in Seminole County history, let alone the city of Strongwood. Get it right, Longwood. (laughs) Very cool. That's awesome. I'm very stoked. Oh, God. We, me and my wife did an interview for it today, and I started tearing up. Just, they brought me back to the day that uh, my kid was born, right? And then, you know, short three short years later, he was diagnosed as being uh, uh, moderate to severe on the ASD spectrum as nonverbal autistic. And if you always follow me on uh, Twitter or Facebook especially, I post his triumphs. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. I, I feel like I cry it's every day. With, I feel like I cry every day with this kid. Like a, I'm a big wimp just because he does something legit. Raj, I'm not BSing this because he's my kid. I really mean this. He does something every day where I'm looking at Larissa going, see what he does. See what he said. See what he did. Because the doctor said 99.9% chance he'll never say one word. He'll never talk. And while, okay, he's not talking. He's not saying sentences. He can say hi. He can say Bye. Uh, if you really want something, he will, you know, he'll communicate with you the way Jackson communicates. 
Just because he can't talk don't mean he's weird, don't mean he's different. And that goes for any neurodiverse person out there that's watching this right now. Just because we learn differently or, or communicate differently, that don't mean any of us are weird or different because of it. And the, what I like is society's finally starting to kind of catch up. And events like this, I think, will help neurotypicals understand it better. Yeah, that's amazing. So uh, definitely check that out. That sounds that sounds amazing. And I always love watching uh the, the progress with your son and er, everything on on x and, and instagram so it's really cool so thank you very yeah. proud of him um i don't know how to segue to this but, no, go right into it, but yeah. uh but uh so finally we got uh oh was there anything else from uh raw that uh that uh captured your eye I mean, there was one thing i wanted to bring up and that was what, ricochet doing a fall away slam to ivar <laughs> I missed that. I didn't see it. Oh man, you got to watch it. It was that match was just it was awesome. It was really good. I, I'm just shocked that they've been doing this stuff with Ricochet every week, and he has no real plan at WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's that but, pack though. It's that stacked. Yeah, there there was this uh, part of the match where Ivar went to splash Ricochet in the corner, and Ricochet caught him uh, in a slam, and then did a fallaway slam on Ivar, which just an insane visual. Was it a fall away uh, where he does a backflip and lands on Ivar in a pinning predicament? No, he, oh. no it was the Razor Ramon throwing my fall away slam. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it so was what I used to TV. call that, I, I used to call that, that was one of my moves I used in my my sweet arsenal of seven moves. And uh, that, <laughs> I would just say sack of shit, SOS, while I'm calling it in the ring. <laughs> SOS, what? Duck yeah, one. Because that's what they are. Yeah. Sack of shit. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, so we got the match order for WrestleMania night one and night two as of right now, and uh, what's on each night. So night one's going to open with Rhea Ripley defending against Becky Lynch. Yeah, and then going on to the six pack ladder match: uh, Judgment Day, DIY, New Day, Awesome Truth, New Catch Republic, and A Town Down. <laughs> yeah. There'll be some cool high spot somewhere where somebody almost dies. Great. Yeah, uh, then Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee versus Santos X, Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. Okay, because Dom's in it, I'm interested. That's it. Yeah. You think Bad Bunny will be involved again this year? Got to wonder. It'll help, but I don't care if he is or not. Then Jey Uso versus Jimmy Uso. Good. That's going to be good. That's going to be really good. Yeah. Jade Cargill, Bianca, Bianca Belair, and Naomi versus Damage Control. High expectations of this one. Huge expectations here. Yeah. Uh, Gunther against Sami Zayn. Going to be a great match. Underrated match of the night, potentially. Yeah. And then the main event, The Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. Going to be awesome. And, and, and for those of you... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You broke up there for a second, Matt. There's nothing really to add to that tag match. Everyone knows it's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So and and uh, we did a podcast on – yeah, no, I can hear you fine now. And uh, for those of you, uh, we did a podcast on Sunday where we gave all our predictions for all these matches, our WrestleMania preview uh, episode. So if you haven't checked it out, uh, check it out on this YouTube channel or on the podcast version, the audio only, which you can subscribe on iTunes, uh, Google Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere you get your podcast. So that's night one. Uh, before we get to night two, we'll get a couple more of these Super Chats. Uh, Jay Hudson with a ten dollars super chat saying, "What do you make of the CM Punk comments that AEW isn't the, in the business of making money, and calling Tony Khan a money mark? What is the difference between Triple H versus Tony Khan?" And and Punk also made the point that he feels like guaranteed contracts ruined wrestling. Yes, well, because can see they're not why. fighting for the house. You're absolutely. He's right, but at the same token, I mean, I fed my family off that guaranteed contract. I was able mm -hmm. to buy a home. And our vehicles with those guaranteed contracts. So I, I can't complain now and be a hypocrite, right? Um, but but again, I wasn't the one that's drawing the house like he is. So maybe he's got a different, you know, viewpoint because he is the one that puts asses every eight inches. Um, but uh, if you Jay Hudson, you go back in the beginning of this podcast, you'll see I literally answer that question like almost verbatim. Except I do not compare him to Triple H because there is no comparison. I'm not saying that to be disrespectful to Tony. I'm just saying Triple H is the, you can always tell he's a leader. He's an authoritative position. 
and knows when to step in and be a leader. And uh, so far, Tony, from what we're hearing publicly, at least from Punk in this interview, it's not looking that way. Maybe there's other instances where he is, and maybe we just don't know. And to be fair, we shouldn't know. It should stay backstage. I, I don't like when everything gets all palace intrigue gets completely revealed to the public. I, I usually don't like that. Yeah. And to be fair, Tony Khan is kind of doing the jobs of Triple H and Nick Khan, you know. Yes. No, not kind of. He is. Yes, he yeah. is. Yeah. And Nick Khan, I mean, he's a beast when it comes to making money. I mean, he's all about it. And uh, you're seeing it now. And these sponsors, I mean, we'll see how that prime bottle looks on the mat at WrestleMania. But Doesn't matter. Uh, He's yeah, making exactly. that. He's making that chatter. It's going to be the most financially successful WrestleMania of all time. This is going to be the most mm-hmm. financial, financially successful year. So, yep. Nick Khan, uh, Nick Khan knows what he's doing. Scotty Sailor with the four ninety nine super chat. BTR is over, so we got to let Glenn know. Uh, does Boater Punk interfere in Seth Drew, allowing Priest to cash in? Love you guys. Ooh. Does Boater? What's Boater mean? I don't, well, he means CM Punk, but I don't know. Maybe a weird typo, but um, okay. a CM Punk interfere at that match allowing Priest to catch Ooh. it. That would be a good way to do it. Punk lays them both out, and then Ooh. Priest music hits. I just, I want, okay, because I, I did want to see Punk eventually win this championship belt, whether it's from Drew or whether it's from Seth, I don't care. Um, mm-hmm. But that's months off in the distance, so maybe they do it this way. Because Damian Priest does have that briefcase, I do keep forgetting that. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I just don't yeah, think. I'm sorry though. You got to give it to Drew though. Drew's got to have a little bit of a run with this title because he deserved it. He's earned it. You can argue so is Damian Priest, but Damian yeah. Priest is not on the same level right now as Drew McIntyre, respectfully. Yeah. Um. All right. If Drew resigns, and you've got to think he's going to, but of course he until, is. Until he has putting it out there, that he's not. <laughs> he is going to sign. All right. All right. Night two, WrestleMania. Uh, it's actually going to open with uh, Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre. That makes sense. I would want that match if I was a champion. And it's Roman and Cody that I know everyone's wanting to see. Yeah. I would, mm-hmm. if I'm saying Seth's shoes, I want that first match. But do you think if they're doing a title change, they have it on first? Yes, because they're, they're doing a title change later that night in the main event anyway. And they've done it before. Seth Rollins beat Brock Lesnar in the opener uh, at WrestleMania years ago. Um, Philadelphia Street Fight. Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits against mm. Final Testament, Karrion Cross and Authors of Pain. Got friends in this match. And I got to be honest, I don't. I'm not drawn to it. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I don't care, but. Uh, I'm eh. happy, happy a couple of my guys are going to get a nice payday out of it. That's about it. Yeah. And then we got LA Knight versus AJ Styles. Ooh, yeah. Sign me up on this one. Yes, definitely. I cannot wait for this match. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Triple threat. Logan Paul defending against Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. I think this is going to be underrated, too. I think this has the potential to be another really great Mania match. Yeah. Then EO Sky against Bailey for the WWE Women's Championship. Yeah, Bailey's going to win this month. We all think that. Um, it could be a good match, but the storyline is better than what the match, in my opinion, could be. The match could be great for all I care. The storyline behind the match, though, is so damn good, so mm-hmm. fascinating and entertaining. I love what they've done with the layers to this particular storyline. Yeah. And finally, the main event, uh, undisputed WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns defending against Cody Rhodes. So six matches on night two, mm-hmm. seven on night one, and The Rock is on night one. So you got to mm-hmm. think there's going to be a lot of stuff on night two. And obviously the rock you'll see him on night two yep. somewhere. Um, you will most likely the main event. So yes. solid card uh, is looking at that. What night do you think stands out more? Or there's, a matches, there's a couple of matches. There's a couple, there's a couple matches in there. I'm surprised they're in there. Um, yeah. And I, I'm not going to say which I don't want to be disrespectful, um, mm-hmm. but th- there are a couple matches in there. Um, Cause I didn't hear you say the Gunther match. Oh yeah, you did. Yes, you did. You yeah. did say that. So you have some really good matches like Gunther Sammy and some of the main event matches, the, the, the draw matches, obviously. But then you have some mid-card matches that are in there that I know, well, Matt, you have to have mid-card matches in there, obviously. Okay, but you have a lot of stars that are not in a mania that yeah. should have mania matches and if they and should have maybe higher profile mania matches. Like, we could have done more of Bobby Lashley here. Yeah. 
And both nights have two-hour kickoff shows with no matches announced for either. And the Andre the Giant Battle Royal is going to be on SmackDown. So Which there you have it major, is. You have made Raj has major heat with that, by the way, folks. I do. I'm not happy. I don't get why they don't just put it on the kickoff show. <laughs> they should. They should. They should. Do we know yeah. what's going to be on the kickoff show yet? There's nothing. It's just them talking. As of right now, it's just them talking for two hours. CM Punk's going to be on both nights, be it Big E, but... Um, Oh, yeah. good. I've got combo. Will they both be on the same time? Uh, geez, I'm, I, I'm forgetting right now. But, I um, hope so, because they're, they're a good combo, those two together. They are. They did that WrestleMania kickoff show, and they, they were really good. They were really good. So, well, awesome, guys. We are, we are Best numbers ever. We really appreciate it. Um, like and subscribe, and we're going to be here all weekend. So keep definitely how, subscribe and keep checking us out. How many viewers do we have? Well, have viewers. Over 1,200 now. Yeah. All right. So, so because with so many here, I don't want to just run away from you guys and leave you. Uh, if it's cool with you, Roz, could we also yeah. quickly talk about Friday Night SmackDown? Because I never got a chance to talk about that with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. La 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 last Friday night, not just past right. Friday, but the Friday before, where okay, yeah. Rock beat the bejesus out of uh, 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 Cody Rhodes. Uh, that was on Raw. La I'm last sorry. Raw. One on one. No, no, not not including Seth Rollins in the ring. But okay. he did it work with Cody's tour bus. It was on SmackDown. Wasn't that? That was on Raw last week. Uh, it was Raw last Monday. week? Yeah. Did we, did we cover it? And look who's doing a run-in. Uh, we... Going. How is this still happening? You're only joining because we're doing our all-time greatest. You had to come in and try to steal our heat. <laughs> I wasn't even watching. I just finished that other uh, thing. Talking about the <laughs> So big time Rubenstein. Yeah, that's your new name. <laughs> BTR. BTR. <laughs> um, that's it. You've been well, anointed. So, bro, we're about to we're about to finish, Glenn. But question: Did did we cover Rock beating up Cody with the tour bus or no? We talked about last that. Week. No, I okay. guess. We, no, last week you guys would talked about that. Yeah. So I was making yeah, fun we, of Cody's never dog a... being on the side of the bus. <laughs> Right. You did make fun of that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> then we talked about it. Okay, good. Yeah, it all blends together after a while. It does. Right. We were saying how we're going to be all over uh, on on this channel this weekend. So yeah, you know, subscribe, uh, like, and and maybe even Monday. We'll see. We'll see how everything goes, and if we've got the stamina for it on on Monday after uh after two podcasts on Saturday, one Oof. Sunday. Two. Yeah. Oof. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be a busy one, but I'm looking forward to it. WrestleMania week, it's it's Christmas for wrestling fans, so it'll oh, be awesome. Great. Can I ask the questions in the chat room? Absolutely. See if, they'll, see if they'll answer. Chat room, what are your plans for WrestleMania? How do you view it? Are you watching it at home? More importantly, what food are you guys going to be getting? Do you order pizza? Do you go to a Hooters and watch it? Do you go to your friends and 12 of you guys watch it? Um, so where do you guys go see it and what food do you guys have when you watch it? Um, Matt, what do you eat? Do you do a free day on WrestleMania? Oh my God. Absolutely. I have okay. two cheat days, two, 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 easy for me to say two cheat days a week. And, uh, I'm using them both on Mania Absolutely. weekend. Yes. So they're both going to be pizzas for me, pepperoni, large pizzas. I eat by myself. For me, it's Indian food delivery, man. This this one Indian restaurant, the spicy chicken curry. I get it extra spicy. Some garlic naan and some chili chicken. It's good stuff. What do you do? So, so like the uh, the yeah, curry it's... with the chicken curry, he just dip it in there. It's it's so good. Mm. Nice. And my my uh, my family's gone this weekend for uh, with a dance competition, mm. so I get to make I, I get to get it extra spicy because I'm the only one that can handle it. So it's gonna be good. <laughs> Glenn. <laughs> Well, yeah. uh, I'm it's like recovering still. For, I was traveling last week. I was at Disneyland, then I was in LA. Mm -hmm. So last week I had kind of a cheat week. So I'm just now yeah. back on kale, cauliflower, beans, greens, you know. Mm -hmm. But I might, maybe I'll do something uh, a little, like a mini cheat, maybe some cauliflower wings breaded on Saturday or something. So since I was like, again, six years old, I. Yeah. Always had, I always associated pizza and yeah. Tostitos uh -huh. with salsa for some reason with WrestleMania. <laughs> <Always>. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's something about that too. And like 
you know this because you can get really high quality, like authentic Mexican food in the best salsa now. But there is something about, for me, it's a lot of, uh, no, it's um, pace. There's something about pace picante sauce with the green Ooh. lid. It just mm-hmm. takes me back to being a kid. So for me, mm-hmm. it's the, the is that the sauce. hot one? Because the hot paste picante sauce is, is that's red. Yeah, Hot's red, medium yeah. is yellow, green is mild. So when I first started wrestling, Inc., this was back in like 97. And mm-hmm. in one of my posts, um, I remember mentioning that I was a big fan of paste picante sauce. And a fan of the site sent me this gigantic case of paste. It was like <laughs> nice. 24 bottles. It was the yeah. first time anyone had ever sent me anything on the site. Yeah. Remember cool. it to this day. It was awesome. It's awesome. Uh, some of these responses. Sue Haynes saying chicken taters and onion rings. There we okay. go. Good choices. Good choices. Those are good choices. Yes. Um, Ab saying friends, lamb shawarma, and kebabs. Ooh, you guys got good eclectic tastes. Much better than me. Um, Miss WWE Girl 2 is going healthy, saying watching WrestleMania 40 at home and making a healthy dinner. There we go. At least one of us are responsible. Good job, Miss WWE girl, too. And Francisco's yeah, with time. you. Very excited. Pizza at home on night two. <laughs> and then <laughs> we got a couple more uh, super chats real quick. Uh, Scotty Saylor. Thank you again, Scotty. $1.99 super chat saying BTR as it were in the house. Big time. Hashtag, right inside. hashtag as it were. If you know, you know. As it were. <laughs> As you know, you know. And our good friend, Bigfoot Sneakerhead, $1.99, saying he's going to Ooh. Wale Mania and then to WrestleMania on Sunday. What? To, that's awesome. BFS, I went to Wale how, Mania a couple of times. BFS, how have you not, like, messaged me this? I, you did not tell me you were going to Mania. That is awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Have fun, yeah, brother. Send us, send us notes if you can. And, uh, yes, please. Yeah. Good idea, brother. It's going to be good, man. I mean, there's so much to look forward to this weekend. Um, Yeah, I just think this is going... There's going to be so many high points, right? Like, there's not a lot of filler matches on any show this year. And in fact, I mean, it's overflowing into Friday now, you know? My only... Okay, so my only... My only, like, small gripe, and I'm being spoiled by this mania. I know I am, right? Cody's finally winning the belt. It's all I seem to give a crap about, right? So it's finally going to happen, and I'm still bitching, right? Well, here's what I'm basically about. It's that Bobby Lashley, Prophet versus Karrion Cross, Rando, six man. Like that, I, I love, I'm good friends with two of the guys in that match. They're going to get great, great paydays. Like I was telling Raj earlier, I'm happy for them for that. It doesn't belong yeah. on Mania. It does not belong on Mania, though. I My opinion. Cross's promo on social kickoff. media last night. He does great social media promos. Uh, those are his best work, I'll argue. Watches. Yeah. He does very good work when he's able to control the environment and the editing and things like that. He does really good work on, on social media posts. I just, with promos. But, like, just the match itself, it just feels forced. And I've not been told, I've not been given enough repetitions to care about Karen Cross and his new, and his new you know, group. Yeah. Yeah. I hate him saying that. I hate saying that as a friend, you know, but whatever. I'm supposed to tell you guys the truth. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, I mean, it'll be, it'll be a good match. It's just that the story they've told to date has it's, not, yeah, it's not cooked, you know? And I think, I think a lot of us were expecting uh, Montez to kind of break out by now. You yes, know, it feels like he's kind of yes. been held back with this faction, and he, he is. I was he should be higher on the card as a singles by now, in my opinion, the, from last the, year. The minute they started airing uh, both he and his wife's reality show on Hulu, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. what are you doing, WWE? You're not featuring him, putting him in a tag match and a six man, put him mm-hmm. in a singles. He's ready. This dude is beyond ready, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Karen. Karen Kang, my, this is my kind of my kind of dish: fish pakoras, <laughs> kebabs, garlic naan, and butter chicken, brother. <laughs> God, you all got good tastes. Yeah. Well, we went way longer than expected. <laughs> yes, I'm surprised you guys were still going. I was like, "There's no way they're still in the air." Oh, well, wow, the punk wow. stuff. The punk stuff went a while. <laughs> yeah. How heck of an interview! I was uh, really impressed with that. Yeah. And let me ask you a question: When he was talking, yeah. Glenn, did you get the vibe that like he was? Purposely trying to go out of his way to like stick it to AW, or did he come off like 
honestly, like, like I don't want to talk about this. This is so annoying. I hate even have to bring this up. But look, this is how it went. It seemed like, like he was keeping it very real. But it, what's interesting, though, mm-hmm. is when he said that the aw shucks, happy to be here, Phil stuff he was doing, that he was just leaning into what he thought that crowd wanted to hear. And I was like, whoa, that was like, you're telling me res- you're telling me wrestling's fake? Like, this is all set up? <laughs> um, yeah, it was just, it was kind of, uh, it's tough to do something like that. Because, Matt, think about the most sincere promo you've ever given. Mm-hmm. Like if you came out later and you're like, ah, I was just telling the audience what they wanted to hear prisoner of the moment. Yeah. Like that's, that's tough, man. Like, I don't know that you want to, you shouldn't mess with people's memories like that. He could have said, I did feel that way at first. And then I realized what a shit show it was. Yeah. yeah. Well, good. Actually, that's not a bad catch Glenn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's my main note. You know, that's but I thought main- the rest of it was nice. That's your main note. What about well, him getting an injury and it's AEW doing literally nothing to get him a doctor to do the surgery? I don't know. Oh, paying millions of bucks to this guy. They don't even take care of the dude's health. They don't get him set up with a surgeon. They don't get him set up with PT. That's yeah. a joke. That's a joke. That That is the most disparaging comment in that entire interview that hurts that company, in my humble opinion, the most. Well, and especially given what he went through with WWE. Yeah. No. You know? Yeah. I just thought his body language was very different versus the fired up Phil when he did the Cole Kamanica podcast just to throw a grenade on that bridge to WWE, right? But he was just going for broke and just burying everybody. <laughs> and, and like right back, everybody is just burying. Yeah. Versus this style, again, to me, body language is important. So it's facial expressions. I watch all of that. He just, I don't think he was making any of that up. I don't think he was exaggerating. I think he was flip, like flipping annoyed to have to talk about it. Yeah. And, and it gives off that vibe. Well, and to that end, it is interesting that I don't think... Well, it was fascinating hearing him talk about that disastrous media scrum. That that was like when he just had enough. Yeah. And um, I don't know, knowing some of the people involved with that, it's uh, mm-hmm. it's an interesting story. The stuff he couldn't talk about, like Brawl Out, that was... Yeah. I mean, he was pretty clear in setting his boundaries, but I'm curious... I don't think he has heat with WWE, but at the same time, like if I'm WWE, I'm thinking it's great to have him back. We're going to make a lot of money together, but we also need to keep this guy at arm's length because at some point, everything we trust him with, he could burn us. I don't yes. think you're that concerned about it. The, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. I see if you're WWE uh, going, why you might think that, but yeah. with, with my opinion there, it's a different WWE. This is not Vince That's anymore. True. This is Nick Khan's WWE, right? Where he's going to let CM Punk be CM Punk because CM Punk is what brought him to the dance. CM Punk is what put asses every eight inches, even if he's talking about a different company. For those of you, he talked about AEW, why don't you talk about WWE? Well, guess what? Every one of us at WWE fans, we wanted to hear all that. We did. Yeah. Yeah. And crazy that he uh, uh, narked out Bailey on inviting him to that Raw. Well, obviously, it's okay to do so at this point. I know, I know. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Think, yeah. Uh, your donation on, on what he, they're having for a WrestleMania? 26 vodka sodas. Wow. <laughs> You're Raj, they, 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 they can keep up with you, Raj. <laughs> yeah. You're on yeah, no kidding. And pronouns, pal. It's Skyline Chili that night. <laughs> I love that name. I love that name. <laughs> yeah. Pronouns, <laughs> pal. So, all right, well... Uh, Glenn, do you want to do the honors? You want me to do it? Sure. So everybody, we need you to do us a huge favor. Raj, uh, his ego is entirely driven by engagement and, uh, he has all the money in the world. His, uh, parents, you know, famously threw away that contest. He won as a child for all the He-Man figures. He's still trying to compensate that hole in his heart. And the only way he can do it, not with gobs and gobs of cash and buying himself all the, the toys he wants, he needs subscribers. And so what we need you to do (laughs) is go to our YouTube channel at gigantic pop on YouTube. And we need you to subscribe to the channel. If you want to click the bell notification, because we're going to be going live. You could any time of day, you could just get that notification, like the bat signal. We're right here. And we want you to join us because we want you to partake 
and the gigantic popness. So uh, please be sure to subscribe. Follow Raj on Twitter. He's at the Raj Geary. Uh, that'll uh, pump his ego up a little bit more. Matt's at BP Matt Morgan. Matt's <laughs> got more subscribers than he knows what to do with. He forgets he has his Twitter half the time. I'm at Glenn <laughs> Rubenstein. I'm never going to break 10,000 followers. Something in the algorithm is just trying to, to uh, deny me that. But we're going to be here all WrestleMania weekend talk with you about NXT Stand and Deliver to talk to you about WrestleMania Night 1, WrestleMania Night 2. There will be news. There will be surprises. There will be hot takes. Mm -hmm. uh, all that and more. So everybody, happy WrestleMania week. Remember, if you leave a beer out Friday night, Stone Cold will pass by your house and uh, give you a hell yeah for WrestleMania. So everybody, <laughs> on behalf of Matt Morgan, Rosh Geary, and myself, we will catch you back here next time on Gigantic Pop. <laughs> take care.